germs are away, so <laughs> okay, that's the greatest thing. So we'll be healed soon. And uh, tonight I'm going to talk you something really about um, the character, not character, but God's timing. Because this morning when I hear Brother Lee, he was preaching on God's command. I said, oh, that's great. <clears throat> and then when I hear Brother Charlie preach, he was preaching on God's mercy and God's you know, salvation. So ooh, that's all related to God. And then I was had my message prepared uh, yesterday. We never talk with each other, but it's all about God, you know. So, and I was talking about uh, God's timing. So in in, in I would say it's more about um, for our side why we should waiting on God. You know, sometimes we feel why we need to wait on God because and you know God is the timing like. In, in um, uh, revolution, this says um, he was the Alpha and he was the Omega, and he was the beginning, he was the end. So he basically he's all through the history of human race. So why? <coughs> excuse me. So there's the reason why we need to wait on God's timing. And many times we saw our immaturity on. Um, not waiting on God. That's always happens. We see when the babies they want to eat, they cry. You know, when they cannot get in in meat today, they will cry. And sometimes that's uh, a Christian life, which is like a baby. We, we cry, we yelling, and we saw that that's what we need. But that's maybe not what we need. And God knows the best. Like today, I know there's a hot topic about gun control, controlling in America. <coughs> and many things to do with, you know, why we, why do we should have a gun or not. And many people will argue, and I don't want to go on that topic. But I know that a father will not purposely give his son a gun when he was only two or one year old. And the same, our Heavenly Father, he will not give us a something that hurt us and hurt our relationship or hurt our life um, in the long term. So tonight I'm, I'm going to see something in the book of John and just see how God working things, why God allows us to wait and these things. Okay, let's pray and we'll, uh, if you have your Bible, turn to John chapter 11. John chapter 11. If you're there, uh, I will pray. And it's a long chapter, but we're going to finish it. Yeah, let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for tonight, and thank you for bringing us together to study your word and help us to have a clear thought and understanding that your word may be preached and your truth may be revealed to our heart, and then we can use it to apply our life. I pray for Pastor and our teens in the camp that you use the message there to save the young people and to uh, reveal the truth to them that they may change their life, or if they are saved, they can make uh, life-changing decisions uh, for their life. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So, just think of uh, this question uh, before we go to this topic. How long will you willing to wait for, say, a free sandwich in Subway? If you know you're going to uh, get a free sandwich, you know, just by staying online. I would say if 10 minutes maybe I wait for it, or maybe say 20 minutes, you know, if it's a foot long, maybe, you know, it's worthy to work, if I don't have any work, so that could be possible. How about if you can get a free car, how long are you going to wait? I think probably I can wait there for two or three days, you know, without eating, you know, this is like if you cannot leave the land, you know, if you came back, so I probably maybe ask Charlie to bring my food so I can stay on land. So I got a, got a free vehicle, because now I really need a vehicle. So, but when we die desperate, we think we need something, we're going to pay the price. And then we always uh, discount our life. I mean, discount is how long can you wait for your own life? In other words, how long are you going to waiting to wait like you know, something going to change your life. You know, maybe just maybe one more year. You know, I know our church has many uh, single guys here. 
maybe you, I was, you know, single ladies too, but maybe you just wait one more year and God prepared the right person to you, and then you had a wonderful marriage and to serve the Lord together. But maybe you just rush to go on to, you know, I just really want to get married, I really want to get involved in a relationship, and then you rush in with someone, you get married, and you know, that happens around us all the time. Because we don't wait on God, that sometimes be dangerous. And maybe they are, God wants us to wait because we are not ready. And more importantly, I think many times God wants us to wait was because it's for His glory, also for our benefit. As we look on um, this message tonight on um, John chapter 11, um, it says, Now a certain man was sick, named uh, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary which was, uh, which was anointed the Lord with uh, anointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, say, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, there, This sick is not unto death, but for the glory that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. So when we see this message but just by here, we know the relationship between Jesus and the family there. So this family really is a family has, or what do they say, they have very close relationship. As we know, you know, we care, and then even they refer to He whom thou lovest. So they know that Jesus loves Lazarus, was sick. And many times in our Christian life, you know, it's just literally we had a relationship, we want to tell someone, and we know someone may do something, and then maybe just change the result. So they know to find the right person to tell. Like this morning, Brother Liu who was preaching about, you know, the, the poor farmer. He know who to look and who to ask him for. And he got the experts goes in and check on the man. And so they found the, the place to get the, the man. So they can dig out uh, more materials from, you know, their space. It cost him a few, few hundred dollars, if I remember correctly, to get all the equipment. <coughs> So those people know who to ask, the family. And in our life sometimes when we are waiting, we don't know who to ask. Like we, we kind of going around asking people to help. But really if, we, uh, if you remember in uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1, it said, to everything there is a season and a time for to every purpose under the, the heaven. And God has everything set up, as I mentioned in the beginning. He was the beginning and He was the end. And nothing in our life there is a surprise to Him. But He already has a higher plan for us. And also, if you continue in, in reading Ecclesiastes chapter 3, 11, it says, He has made everything beautiful in His time. And as we see this word say here, it's, it's true too. And Jesus was saying from his word, he said, this thing is not to die, but to the glory, to bring the glory, of, uh, the, the Son of God might be glorified thereby. So in our life, sometimes we feel like we are waiting for some result, and we don't know the purpose. That's why we struggle. And if we don't wait, it could be dangerous. I just gave an example for such as marriage. Or maybe in the traffic light. You know, many people run over the red light and then they get killed. If you check on the website, their data say, you know, because they run the red light. It's just like, say, three seconds, two seconds. And they kill themselves and damage other people's lives. 
So that's just when we don't know the purpose of God, we don't want to wait, we don't know this why we should wait. That's because we are lack of understanding of God's timing. In the word of God says in uh, is in his timing he made everything beautiful. And in every time everything has its season. That's why we are waiting. So that's God's timing. We got to understand no matter what happens in our life it's for the glory of God. And this morning as Brother Charlie also preached about you know the purpose for God to reconcile us and to save us and ultimately is for us to glorify Him. So that's the purpose. And even God created us in His image and has the same purpose to glorify and to you know reflecting His glory. So that's the first point I had tonight was for God's timing that He may be glorified. You know, I put in those points backwards just, you know, so you can understand that why is this happening? Because that's God's purpose. So that's why I, I really like this chapter is before we go through the story <coughs> and everything goes through, you know, from the human side of emotional, everything going through, that God already tells us, as our Brother Lee preached this morning, His command is very clear, as also as His timing is so clear, and His promise is very clear. And He has His way of doing things just by bringing glory to Him. So that's why He wants us to wait on Him. And He always has the best plan for us. And through waiting, you know, we may feel struggle and we may feel tired, we may be afraid, but there are many Bible words tonight in the end of the sermon. I will uh, read some Bible words relate to those things, and we will see how God has promised and how can we catch those promises. So the first point is when we are waiting in God's timing, we can bring glory to God and magnify Him. So as we continue to read this chapter, verse <coughs> Verse 6 says, <coughs> When he had heard there, therefore uh, that he was sick, he adore, abide, aborted two days still in the same place where he was. And then after says that he to his disciples, Let us go to Judah again. <coughs> his disciples said unto him, Master, the Jewish shall lay shouts to stone thee, and God goest thou theaters again. Jesus answered, uh, There are not twelve hours in the day. If any man walks in the day, he stands not because he sees the light of the wor of this world. But if a man walks in the light, he uh, stumbles because there is no light in him. There are things said, this thing said him, this thing said he, and after that he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus, <coughs> Lazarus sleeps, but I go and I may wake, awake, awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. So when we see here, God used the message of saying, we are sometimes just like the disciples, you know. That's my understanding. I, by reading through it, is when we are waiting God, we can it reveals our kind of motivation, you know, what we go through inside of us. So in here, that Jesus was telling his disciples that the 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 man should work in the daytime. And so they should not stumble. And the, like the last verse was saying, <coughs> when Jesus said, "Our friend was sleep," and he, the disciples said, eh, "If he sleep, he should be well." But really, is the disciple doesn't understand what Jesus means when he said Lazarus was sleeping. 
He mean he was tied as we, we had the scripture, so we know the thing. The disciples don't know. But sometimes in our life, what's happening is we are waiting and we do nothing. We say, okay, we got to wait on God and, you know, so let's just wait and pray. But God in here was telling the disciples, you know, man got to work in the daytimes so you're not in stumble. So as us waiting on God, we should be prepared and to ready to go with God's plan when it's God's timing. What happens in here, disciples don't understand what God's meaning. Why we need to go and people at Judah want to kill you last time? Why you still want to go back? But sometimes we do the same thing. I already failed one time, why I need to try again? But it doesn't work, you know. It's, it's not going to work again. But we don't know that that's God's timing. The first time doesn't work because that's not time yet. So the second point is we got to prepare and to be ready when God's time is there. So we got to know God's purpose for waiting on God's timing is bring glory to Him. And we need to be prepared and to work and to understand to ready when it's God, God's time to to go or to act. And then we go. And then as we continue to read, <coughs> excuse me, uh, verse 13 says, How bad Jesus spoke, uh, spoke of his, his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking a rest in sleep. Then said Jesus unto them, Plainly, Lazarus is died. So Jesus explained to them, that's what I just said, is sometimes when we don't understand, God explains. But it should be in God's timing. It's not in our timing. Like I was asking, well, when my dad passed away, I said, you know, that's just, you know, it's totally changed my life plan. And maybe some college students, when they fail a class, they say, man, that just doesn't work. And uh, currently I was applying for working for my whole school. Uh, I was applying for GA, if you know that program in, in the school is for graduate assistance, so you can get free study and you get paid like, you know, the minimum wage for working there uh, as a student, a grad student. I applied once and it doesn't work out. I, I was thankful, you know, so I said, okay, Lord, if it doesn't your will, so I continue my program with someone else, you know, already willing to pay for my bill. So I should do it because my motivation is that's my plan. I said, okay, if I get into the GA program, you know, my sponsor will not need to, you know, pay my bill, so I can work hard to, you know, pay my own bill. But that's not God's plan. It just revealed to me. It doesn't reveal me to me into say last week when I had another interview with them, and then they said. Oh, because you have a GA interview before, so we probably don't need to do the on-site interview. That's two years ago. Who knows? I didn't get the job, but I still had the interview done. And it doesn't work for me that time. I was struggling. Why, you know, Lord, I want to do the right thing, and why it doesn't work? You may in your life struggling. Why it doesn't work in the first time? And maybe two years later, like me, I just realized, yeah, God has timing. Because now I had my work, I cannot leave my office. I probably had a hard time to get permission to get a day off, you know, to go on-site interview. But because I had a GA interview before, so I may qualify not go there for another on-site interview. That just revealed to me like a few days ago, I said, oh, that's worked out. And plus, because I do not the GA program, and then I can focus in on my study so I can graduate in two years, which saves me a lot of time in school and saves my sponsor financially. And in these two years, because you know I was 
in school in the summer, and then I can have the opportunity to serve in this church. If I'm a GA, probably I'll, I'll be in the school working the summer. Since I'm GA, probably going to give me a work during the summer too. So I will not be in here today. So that time I was struggling. I said, Lord, I want to do the right things. I want to work hard and support myself instead of, become, instead of becoming a burden to other people. But that's not God's plan. And that's not God's timing. So when we work hard, we want to do right. And when God's timing comes, He will bring forth everything and bring His glory and brings our best interest that God has in us. So, God explains. So, when we wait in God, in God, He explains things to us gradually. Okay, as we continue to read, now, uh, and I. Uh, Verse 15 says, And I am glad for your sake that I was not there to the intense ye may believe, nevertheless that us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called uh, Diamas, and to him follow disciples, let us go also go, that we may die with him. Then when Jesus came to found that he had land in and in the grave for four days already. Now Martha uh, Bethany was uh, night unto Jerusalem, also about 15 uh, for longs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brothers. Then Martha, as soon as she heard Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. So what we see in this scene is Jesus went, even though the disciples still don't understand. This happens in our life. Like we God has been reveal our reveal the things to us, you know, through different people, different uh, friends, or family, or Bible reading, you know. God always talking to us and the disciples still don't understand like just us sometimes we just still don't get it it's just so simple if we just trust him and he has his timing we know he will bring glory to God you know that's what we need to do but the thing is disciples here they still don't understand and when when, when Jesus went to the family, Martha heard Jesus and he was going to after him. And Mary would stay in the house. That sometimes just, you know, we don't understand even though it's so obvious. The one who going to solve our problem in his timing is there. We just don't want to take our hands to him to save us, to help us. That's what today many people are not saved. I would say the gospel is so simple, so clear, and just because we don't choose to admit that our wrong, our sin. As this morning, Brother Liv was saying, you know, God's command is so clear and it's so obvious, it's not far. And it's our choice. The same thing, we don't understand that we don't want to choose it. But in the Old Testament, we see many examples. They just trust the Lord. Like Abraham. You know, God promised to be he will be a great nation, but he didn't see it. In Hebrew, was saying about like how he deal with those things. You no, know, he's just by faith. God count him as justified. So that's God's timing. He waited God, and he got God's promise. That's in our life too. When we're waiting on God, and God will reveal His truth and then bring glory to Him, and will be benefit to us. And also, we will know the truth. 
and as we continue, we um, will skip this uh, part, but we know that in the end, Jesus was raised, Lazarus, Lazarus from the dead. And sometimes that's in our life too. We panic. You know, if you read this whole chapter, you see like people, the emotion going on, like Martha says, yeah, I know he will raise during the day when you come again, you know, when the second resurrection. But God did not wait when it's his timing. It's his timing, he makes things beautiful. He raised him that day, brings glory to him, and bring Lazarus back to be a testify for everything. Clear out all the doubts of his disciples for know who he is, because he's the one who gives life, and he's God. So in God's timing, he made everything beautiful. In God's timing, he reveals to us, but we need to prepare and be ready to work and to know like if God wants us to go, we go. And in waiting on God, sometimes we don't understand, but God explains. If we still don't understand, we just need to trust him as we just simply trust him as who he is. He is a merciful God. He has clear command as uh, Brother Liv tells us this morning. And I would say he has clear promise in the Bible. I want to take a few minutes to uh, just finish tonight's sermon. But, you know, I just, when I study, I just found out, you know, really God's word can speak to the heart of people. I don't know what to preach, and I don't know that it's really hard if you're not a preacher and then you, you, you're trying to pray, and Lord, what topic I should preach? As I said with brother um, Charlie on our way to Miami Beach, I said, really when I heard all you preach, and I was so amazed how God worked. I was thinking last night when I was on the bed, you know, I was reading a book and then uh, preparing a sermon. I don't want know to, want to, what to prepare. So I was keeping reading books and reading the Bible. And then it just came out to me like, just talking about God's timing. is a topic really specifically, honestly, for myself. Because I'm in the time, probably many of you have been go through, or maybe will go through in, in your life, a time you need to make many choice in your life. Say you need to make choice for work, for school, for marriage, for your children, your education, maybe for your retirement, you know, all those things. How can you make all those plans? Only know what God wants you to do. And tonight, if you don't take anything away with the message, I want you to know. And as this morning, Brother Leif and Brother Charlie was preaching about God's command and God's love and mercy. And it's our choice to waiting on God's timing. We wait, we do what we need to do, and God will do the rest. And so, uh, some words I found out about waiting on God and this kind of God's promise in Isaiah chapter 40 was uh, 31 it says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up the, with the rain as eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That's God's promise. God's timing, we waiting in Him, brings glory with His promise in our life. It's not us. You know, by myself, maybe I cannot wait a nice second to see what's happening in my life. But it's God's timing with God's promise. He don't brings, when we are waiting, he, you know, if we still have the weary, that's because we're not totally complete. 
don't trust him. That's what I meant in the beginning, just like a baby. When we are hungry, when we are thirsty, we have to have what we want and not. But God knows the best. As a father not going to give a gun to a two years old or one years old, how about Heavenly Father? Who sent his son to die for our place, for our thing. Do you think he don't know what's the best for us? And if you uh, if you read the uh, more bad words seen here is in Psalm chapter twenty seven verse fourteen says, Wait on the Lord, be a good courage, and he shall soon thy heart. Wait, I say, on the on the Lord. Again, he gave us a promise that if we wait on him, he will give us the strength. He will give us the strength, not by ourselves, but based on his promise. Just be willing to wait on his timing. And if you you can if you uh, read in Pro, uh, in Psalm chapter 37 verse 3 and 4 trust in the Lord and do good so thou shalt dwell in the land and where they shall be fed and if we continue to read it says delight yourself also in the Lord and he will give you the desire of your heart and this word has been came to me again and again since last semester I mean since my second year of my master's degree when I was looking for a job and doing preparation for all the things. And this is keeping coming back to me. You know, sometimes I still worry, I still wonder. But when I see what God has done in my life, it's just amazing. I moved in with pastors and then they had a company came in just last week, I mean last Friday. And then on Friday I got a call. I got a job offering and the job offering pray was was also offering with a housing how about that you think God would don't know God knows I don't have a vehicle if I work in market if I stay with Charlie so he you know if he really generous enough I can stay with him so who can bring me to work that's a 15 minute drive and opposite direction with Brother Charlie and Brother Hush. And just so happens on Friday, I moved out from Pastor's place. He was so generous, allowed me to stay in his house while I'm looking for jobs. And just on that day, I got a phone call, I got a job, and I got a housing. And the house only one mile away from my work, my office. How about that? Amen. You don't need a vehicle, you just need to walk to the work 25 minutes. How about that? You think God make mistakes? You think God don't know what he's doing? That's just, I just personal experience. That's why I want to bring this message up. When I pray, I don't know what to preach. That's God's timing. That's my personal testimony too. I was so thankful, honestly. I just wait on God, and He will make things happen. As we see more promise from God, it says in Proverbs, we're saying, trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and then not on thy own understanding. As I mentioned, waiting on God is also trusting Him, just as Abraham and all the people before us who has done that before just trusting on the Lord it might hurt but it has promised with you it's not you or I can wait it's God so trust in the Lord and in the end I want to read one more verse said, and he said, in Luke chapter 18, verse 27 said, and he said, the things which are impossible with man are possible with God. This is our life. When we're waiting on God, sometimes we thought that's not going to happen. 
you know, if it's God's will and God's timing, it's going to happen. Like I'm still, you know, had a job interview with different company, but the thing is, if it's God's will, I know I'm going to get hired and get to work with there. But if not, you know, that's God's timing. I'm not no complaint because He knows. Honestly, with this point of my life, with what happens just in this week, just so many things about God's timing. And I want to conclude with uh, this promise or his statement. Again, says in Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse eleven. He has made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has said the word in their heart, so that no man can find out the work of God makes from the beginning to the end. So God start good work in people, you end the good work. And he made everything beautiful in his time. In his time. And he knows what we need. He will give us what we desire if we trust him, wait on him. So I hope you know when we walk out tonight we know no matter what stage in our life, no matter what situation we are fix, facing, either you go to college, either you're single, either you need to move on or you need to prepare for retirement, you need to prepare for your children, prepare for your life in the future. Always remember, put God in your plan, let God plan it. Let God be the master of our life and have his way and has his timing. And he will make everything beautiful. And it will bring bring glory to him for sure. Like today when I tell you my personal testimony, <coughs> what God has done in me, you can tell the same thing in the future when God tell done things in your life in his timing. That will bring glory to God, also encourage the heart of other Christians. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for tonight that you use your word to teach us to uh, wait on your, on your time, and you will make everything beautiful in your time. Lord, we, we may not know that things, why it's happening and why we cannot do that all right. What, what, what we need to do this moment but just help us to give us the faith that we need to go through every day and trust in Him, trust in You and plan our day with You and let You control our life and our decisions so we may bring glory to Your name and to be an encouraging uh, testimony to others, brother and sister as well as in the future we may be as a testify to uh, those people saying that you are not God. Uh, I pray all these things in Jesus' name.